Welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm gonna be reviewing my Cobalt Warhawk, my custom all carbon monster gravel bike build that I did on this channel. So if you wanna hear what I think about it after over 700 miles on this frame set, please stay tuned. And before I get into that, if you haven't seen my build series on this bike from how I built it from scratch, please make sure to check the card above and the playlist in the description below so you can be caught up on this bike build. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a little bit about the brand Cobalt and how it works and how you can actually purchase a frame set, the specs on this frame set specifically, ride quality, price, and my final thoughts. But let's get started into Cobalt. If you haven't heard of them, they are a newer brand. They are based in the United States. The big thing with them that's really, really cool is you can order basically a frame set alone or a full custom build. So if you like this frame set, you can buy it by yourself and go through my playlist and order a very similar component set to mine and get a similar result or you can just buy a turnkey bike from Cobalt that will be professionally built and shipped to you. This frame set is full carbon, front and rear, and basically it is my version of a carbon bike packing gravel ultimate adventure gravel crusher bike build. So let's get into the features of the fork. It is tapered, fully carbon, including the steer tube. It does have three pack mounts on the side, so you can carry an anything cage or water bottles, as well as fender mounts. Onto the frame set, you have two top tube mounts, the bottom down tube mounts, two sets of bosses in the main triangle for water bottles, as well as rack and fender mounts for the rear. It is front and rear through axle with a 12 millimeter by 100 in the front and 12 millimeter by 142 in the rear with flat mount disc brakes for both. It does use a standard 27.2 seat post and it is set up to run two by with a front derailleur if you'd like. And you can also do a internally routed dropper seat post. The big thing with this is, for my experience, is the tire clearance. It has 700 by 50 C tire clearance and it states on their website as a 650 by 2.1. And I do have a video that I'll put in the card above of me fitting actually 2.2 tires on this bike with plenty of clearance in my opinion. And the frame set does come with basically all the necessary hardware. That means seat clamp, headset, derailleur hangers and everything else. So you don't need anything as far as frame hardware, you're ready to go. And they even provide an ultralight carbon seat post included in the price. And lastly, you do get a lifetime warranty with this frame set. So now let's get on to ride quality. Now for gravel riding, there always is gonna be two separate camps between, in my opinion, steel versus carbon as far as ride quality. Steel does ride really well and carbon can ride really well, but it depends on the layup of the carbon. I was surprised with how well this bike handles and how stable it is. Coming from my giant TCX, which I use as a gravel bike, this obviously actually has gravel geometry or more endurance to stable geometry. And I didn't think I'd feel that much difference between basically a converted cyclocross bike to a gravel bike, but I really did. The longer wheelbase, the taller stack, and a little bit longer reach really made this bike way more stable and way more confidence inspiring, especially on the descents. I didn't feel like I was over the front of the bike, which I really did on my giant TCX a lot of the times, which made me really, really nervous and not as confident. I'm not a great descender in general, but that was something I really noticed going to an actual gravel geometry, let's just call it that for the sake of the video, because it actually did make a huge difference. This bike does turn in very well. It's not super snappy like I was used to on my giant TCX, so my line choice is definitely a little bit different meaning you kind of have to think about it a little bit more, but it carries speed a lot better and it seems to be less likely to be unsettled. The carbon frame with the carbon seat post in a full rigid setup rides really well. Granted, your tire pressure is gonna be really important when doing that, but I've been really happy with this ride quality overall. I typically ride this bike, honestly, most of the time on my 650 by 2.2s. Really like the handling and even with my 170, 2.5 crank set I have on this bike, I never had any pedal strike issues. As far as this bike and harshness compared to my steel frame or other steel frames I've ridden on gravel, it is a little bit stiffer of a ride, meaning you're gonna be a little more chattery than you would be on, let's say, a full steel frame. But you're gonna be saving that, obviously, in the weight, so the climbs feel really, really good on this bike. It ascends really, really well. It tracks really well. The bike doesn't seem really unsettled, but it's got a nice amount of give to it where if you're really kind of humming along, going at a good clip on either the flats or the descents, you kind of can feel the bike move a little bit under you, not like it's wet and noodly, but basically it's kind of tracking with the trail that you're riding on, which I really like that experience and feel from it. And I didn't think I'd get that from a carbon frame. So overall, really, really happy with this. It's definitely the most upright and long bike that I've ever ridden, 
but still handled really well. But again, it's a little bit different riding experience than you're gonna be experiencing on either a converted cyclocross bike or a more racy gravel bike with possibly less tire clearance. So keep that in mind. But for me, I wanted massive tire clearance and all the mounts basically out there. And this bike delivered on both those things and in turn does ride really well. Now let's get on to price. This bike currently retails for $14.99, but keep in mind, I do have that 25% off discount code in the description below. This will get you a full frame set, like I said, with hardware and including a seat post. Now I know that is a good amount of money. It is not the cheapest frame set out there. There are other frame sets you can get that may have the same clearance or mounts, but the big thing is you're getting a lifetime warranty with a company based in the United States. We all know where bikes typically come from. They typically come from overseas, but this is giving you that direct connection, someone who does speak English and can help you out with quick shipping and returns or any issues with the frame. I have been subject to this. I have bought carbon rims overseas before that have melted that I tried to warranty and they were lost in the mail. Now, I know other people may have other experiences with that, but for me, peace of mind does have its value. If you really look at other similar frame sets in the tire clearance or category of this, they're typically gonna be, yes, from a more well-known brand, but they're gonna be upwards of 2,500 to over $3,000. So if you look at it like that, you're still saving a good amount of money and again, getting that lifetime warranty with the company that's based here in the United States. Now let's move on to my final thoughts. Would I recommend this bike to somebody? Absolutely. I've been insanely in love with it. I've been riding it all the time. If you follow me on Instagram, which the link is in the description below, you've seen this bike exclusively basically on my Instagram feed because I ride it a ton. I've actually made this bike essentially right now my N minus one bike with basically two main wheel sets I ride on it. I even use this as a road bike. And now, is it as sharp handling in the canyons on descents as my road bike is? No, definitely not. But to have a bike with just basically an extra wheel set to make a 650 by 2.2 monster gravel setup to a 700 by 32 like road bike crusher, it's great. I love the versatility of it. I used to love Legos as a kid, so I don't mind like switching out a few parts to make this work, especially for someone looking for one bike to kind of rule them all, or if you live in a tight space or just don't have a lot of room, this really can be a very versatile bike and basically be kind of two bikes in one. So if you think about it that way, it's a great value. Now, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. There are a few things I really, really am disappointed it doesn't have. It's mainly mounting options, which I know it has a lot, but I wish it had one, for the fork, a front fork bolt so that I could run a dynamo light. Now I don't currently have a dynamo wheel set, but I'd love to have one for long touring trips or bikepacking trips I would love to do in the future. And that's a little bit of a bummer that I can't mount it directly there. So that is one thing I do wish it had, as well as I wish it had one extra bottle boss on the down tube and the seat tube. If you look at the frame and where the bottle is positioned, I want the seat tube bottle most likely lower for a long style frame bag for the top there. And I'd like the same position for the down tube as well so that I have an option to either run one bottle higher or lower depending on the frame bag or bags that I'm running so that I have versatility in that. That's one thing I really wish it did have because it would make this bike almost perfect for mounting because those are one thing that I've noticed with few of my frame bags I can't really fit perfectly or the bottle rubs or I have to switch out a cage for a side mount. So I just like that versatility and essentially that's just asking for three bolts and I don't think that's a big of a deal. But it's it's a, it would be a nice CD to have. And I do wish that the top tube was slightly more sloping to have some more exposed seat post. I think that would improve the ride quality a little bit and give a better opportunity for a longer length dropper seat post. Just for reference, I am 5'11", and I have about a 31 inch inseam and I'm riding a 56 centimeter. Another thing is the top cap for the headset is pretty short. You can obviously get another headset top cap to make it go a little bit taller so you're not running a ton of spacers. So if you either don't like that look or know that you, even though with the tall stack height, you might want the handlebars a little bit taller, I would look into that so you're not running as big of a stem stack on your bike if you're looking for a really, really upright position. Lastly, if you don't wanna go through the custom route, again, I'll mention it one last time, you can order a complete custom with them. They do have a variety of options on price points and group sets and you can choose your wheel size on there. So you can essentially kind of buy a custom bike, which is cool. This paint job that you're seeing on my bike is my paint job. It doesn't come stock from them. Uh, that is something that I did personally. I asked for a raw frame set. I'm sure if you asked Mike from Cobalt Bikes, and I know that's we do have the same name, uh, they'd probably provide you a bare frame set if you asked nicely and wanted to paint it yourself. But I don't know, you'll have to find that out for yourself. So I hope you like this video. 
I love doing these bike builds for you guys, and please comment below if you like this or have any questions about the Cobalt specifically, and make sure to check out, again, my bike build series on building this from scratch. If you like this content and all the content you've been hopefully watching on my channel for quite a while, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'm trying to make this a full-time YouTube thing, and it really does help out the channel providing cool content like this for you in the future. As well, if you want to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, links are in the description below. Please make sure to turn notifications on, give this video a like, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And thanks for watching another episode of Locked In. Let's get locked in.